Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, welcome, I'm Mazu. And in today's video, we're trying something different. We're gonna be making a jar terrarium. Now I have made one of these off camera before, which I will give an update on um, the three month um, update on it at the end of this video. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy today's video. If you want more videos like this, make sure you comment down below some video ideas. Um, if you like, let me know what you guys wanna see. Make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And now let's get into today's video. The materials you're going to need for this video are a jar, preferably a mason jar. Um, I just got this one at the dollar store. Any um, size and shape works. And you're going to need a few plastic bags. You can go outside and collect the stuff you're gonna need. Let's get into the first step. Okay guys, so I went outside under my porch and you can see I'm just holding my plastic bag right here. And we're just gonna be collecting some rocks now. Um, any size, obviously you don't want them too, too big. You want to be able to, for the water to be able to fit through them. So you don't want them too, too small either. Um, but you also don't want to be sitting out there for an hour collecting really small rocks. So I just collected some big and some small rocks. And you can see I'm just collecting them right here. And yeah, that's all I did. Guys, so now I'm outside collecting the substrate. Now any dirt works. Like I said, you can use dirt from inside your house. Like if you have like a bioactive tank and you can use substrate from that. But since I am doing a native terrarium, I'm just gonna use dirt from outside. Um, and always only take what you need. Don't, don't be greedy, don't hog what you don't need. So I just took a decent amount of dirt, filled up the bag, and the part that I didn't use after the video was done, I dumped back outside in the same spot. So this is personally my favorite part, collecting hardscape right here. This is just a nut that's like broken in half or whatever. So I just want to take that and I end up using that in the terrarium. But this is my favorite part, collecting hardscape and also plants. So right now I just got a pine cone because you know, pine cones can be good to just like crumple up and it makes it kind of cool look. This is just a piece of bark that I had found. And for this part, really be creative. Only take what you need, like I said already. Um, just breaking up the stick into smaller pieces because I, I know the stick is too big for the jar that I had gotten. So, and now that I have done all the hardscape elements, we're gonna start um, looking around for plants. So. The main plant you definitely want to look for and that really thrives in terrariums is stuff like moss. Moss and also right here you can see I'm trying to grab a clover because my other terrarium I actually have a clover that is thriving so I decided to grab one and you got to make sure you get all the roots. Um, the roots are very hard to get so just be very gentle you guys can see those roots right there. This one is kind of half dead so if it works it works if it doesn't end up thriving then I will just take it out of the terrarium. And you can see all this moss we have. I don't know the type of moss. I believe this is star moss. If you do know, you can leave that in the comments. Sorry for the bad camera work, but you just pull up a piece with your fingers, kind of like just get under there. And then you always want to push it over. Always take from the edge, never take from like the middle, because if you take from the middle, it won't be able to regrow, I think. So I just take from the edge um, if you can, just so the moss can regrow, because you, you never want to harm your wildlife. Um, this is also to appreciate nature. And then I found this really fuzzy kind of moss over here. So I thought different textures will be better. So I was like, you know what, I'll take some of this too. And I did take it from the middle on this one. That was my bad, but I still cover it back up and it still looks like it will regrow. Moss is, moss is really, really hardy and grows really well in high humidity settings such as terrariums. And then I found this like weird looking moss over here that looked, I don't know, kind of looked like a spike to me. And so I took a little piece of that and cover that back up and now we're ready to go inside and start scaping. Now that you have followed all the steps and you have your rocks that you're going to be using as your drainage layer, you have your soil that you're obviously going to be using as your soil, you have your plants and your hardscape, you're just going to want to put everything else aside except your rocks. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is you're going to want to wash out this jar. Now that you have washed out your jar and cleaned it of all those chemicals and stuff like that that you know maybe in the jar and also just made it so you can see from it clearly now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your rocks which is your drainage layer and you're just going to want to pour those in so what you're going to want to do is try not to break the glass obviously i mean that wouldn't be good but 
you just want to start putting your drainage layer rocks in. And these are going to act as a drainage layer so the water will sink in between them and I'll get back to you when I'm done. Okay, so here's my drainage layer. Now the deeper to the drainage layer the best. Obviously I mix some sand in there. Now sand will just do the same thing but that was not intentional. Now keep this bag because what we're going to actually be doing is we're going to be taking the lid of this jar and you're going to want to put it on the bag. Now you have to make a divider between the actual jar and the bat and the rocks because you don't want the soil to be leaking into the rocks so what you're going to want to do is take your lid and just draw the circle outline of your jar with a sharpie or anything um that you want to use so now that you have you took your lid and you drew that outline now what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your scissors now always be careful with scissors but you're just going to take your scissors and you're going to cut, cut this outline out okay guys so now that you have cut your um little i know it's definitely not even or anything it's definitely bigger but bigger is better so that the soil doesn't move through now that you've cut this you're going to want to go get a toothpick and you're going to want to put it over the lid just like this and just poke a bunch of little holes in it so that the water can drain through into the drainage layer you have your plastic bag so it has like a million holes in it you're just going to want to take this and just push it in there now you can use now i'm just going to be using this uh brush thing that i use to feed uh cocoa and like i uh, use um substrates and stuff with it just to kind of that's why i said always make it bigger so just in case it doesn't cover the whole thing like i said tweezers and that brush can help but they are not required but they are just recommended so now that you have your little barrier in you can kind of just fold that and i mean it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and now you're going to want to take your substrate bag you guys can see and you're going to want to dump your substrate in so i'll get back to you guys when your substrate's in now that i've made a mess all over the table we've got my substrate in so now i'm going to just start spreading it out equally with my paintbrush. Now, I always do a decent layer of substrate. I don't know why I feel like my plants like that. Uh, I don't know, man. I just do a decent layer of substrate. So, I kind of like to flatten it down. And now that you've made a mess all over your desk or wherever you're doing this, now it's time for the fun part. I always start with hardscape first. I don't know why. I just feel like that's just how I do it. So, I always start with, like, rocks. And then I work my way down the plants. So, but again, it really depends on how you like to do everything. So yeah, um, I'm just going to work around with this hardscape. Now that I've decided on my escape, not my favorite scape, but it's okay. It's just simplistic. And now what you're going to want to do is start adding your plants. Now, like I said, I would start off with the biggest first. So I'm going to work on adding this guy. Now, what my suggestion is to take your tweezers, kind of just like this, put them past the roots. And you can see this will just dig in and push the roots in. So yeah, get to planting. Okay guys, so for some reason, uh, half of my time lapse got cut out, so sorry there's only this little portion, but I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, so yeah, half the time lapse got corrupted, but I hope this still helps to kind of just, so you just can see my process of
that we are done making a mess all over my desk and with the terrarium we're gonna give it a nice mess because you always want to give it a nice not too too much water remember you're not gonna be opening this terrarium ever again unless you do maintenance on it which i just kind of let mine grow so i'm gonna make sure everything's nice and wet and you should see some of the water drizzling down and you can see we well, actually can't see camera won't focus on that but there is little tiny bugs in your soil so i'm just gonna give it a little bit more you can over water so be careful but mine stays near a pretty good window so you see the water is going down through here and into your drainage layer so now you're gonna close your terrarium up tighten that lid and now i'm gonna go show you my other terrarium three month update now that we put that terrarium here, let's take a look at my other terrarium that is really, really overgrown. You guys can see. See the water droplets on the top? I couldn't find a lid, so I had to use water. But you can see that moss is super, super green. You can see that there's clovers growing in there, which I didn't even plant in there. I don't know if you guys can see. Good focus. Oh, as my cat Sylvester comes to say hi. But yeah, you guys can see. It's kind of hard to see. That's from the top view. I'm not going to open it though. You guys can see those big clovers there. Sorry, my cat's rubbing it. But yeah, this is what the other terrarium should look like pretty soon. You can see I put way more substrate in here. You can see that moss growing up against the glass. But yeah, you guys can see this terrarium has definitely grown in really good. This one has ceramic marp on it, like I said, because I couldn't find a lid for it. But you guys can see there's some sticks in there and stuff. And you can just see that moss is just growing really, really nice. Um, but yeah. This is what the other terrarium should look like. Now to the outro. Thank you guys for watching another one of my videos. If you did make it this far, comment down below the word pizza. Because I'm hungry for pizza right now. So I'm going to go clean up this terrarium mess I made. I hope this inspires you to make one. Do something. Because we're all still in quarantine. Well, I mean, it's not like you can go outside and like go to a party or anything. So I mean... Why, might as well do this while we're all bored and home. And this is a nice addition if you want to put it on your desk for school um, or something like that. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, smash that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. Make sure you set it to all because YouTube will do it really shady and set you to personalize. And thank you guys for watching one of my videos. And I hope you did enjoy. And if you learned something, let me know. And I'll see you on the next one. Make sure to do your research. And I'm out. Peace.